you can call me out on being a liberal snowflake or whatever no, about my feelings. Um, but then you, in the middle of your speech, you, I mean, I think this was hate speech, you made fun of transgenders. Um, so well, I made fun of one person who grabbed me by the back of the neck and threatened me with violence, to be fair. I mean, yes, but also Caitlyn Jenner. And it's, you, you seem to be, you, no, no, no. I don't want, no, no. You made it, you were clearly making jokes at the expense of transgender people. So my question is, where do you draw the line between being a mensch and clearly offending people? Like, where do you draw the line? Okay, so uh, for me, right, so, so for me, so for me, if I, if I, if I coldly and clearly state a fact and you're offended by the fact, that's not me being responsible for offending you, that's me saying a fact and you being offended. As far as me making jokes about Zoe Turr, my general rule is that if somebody grabs me by the back of the neck and threatens me with violence on national television, I have the right to make fun of them. That's, that's just as when I was at University of Wisconsin, if but, people are going to chant at me and yell at me, then I'm not going to treat them with, with courtesy because they are not deserving of courtesy. Courtesy is something that you earn by being courteous. Okay, fine. I, I understand that, but like, it just seems a little bit like uh, hypocritical to brag about the fact that you openly humiliated someone on national television while um, also like telling people to be mentioned. I just think that's a little Well, I mean, it, 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 let's put it this way. My, my belief is in mutually assured destruction. So if you're going to, <laughs> so, if, so if you attempt to, to, again, do me physical harm on national TV, then uh, I'm, I'm not going to treat you with, with a level of respect that you have not earned. That's, that's I mean, I'm, I'm treating you with respect and we disagree, right? <laughs> so, because you're courteous. So thank you for that. <laughs> Why would you call it delusion? Because Bruce Caitlyn Jenner, I'll call him Caitlyn Jenner. No, because it's that's her. The, You're not being polite to the pronoun. Because disrespect. Okay, forget about the disrespect. Facts don't care about your feelings. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male, with the exception of some of his sperm cells. You it turns out that his sperm cells are male. You have a thing like Kleinfelter's syndrome. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you like to discuss the genetics? Or well, no, no, what are no. your genetics? Sir? I, I, so let's stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. No, no I know. Well, yeah. but wait, to be fair, but to be fair, wait, but to be fair, but to be fair, but to be fair, you're actually being, but to be fair, you're actually being hey guys, rude. You're and, that, no, 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 and, and that's no, no, no. not fair. I'm sorry, it's not rude to say that someone who is biologically a male sir. is a male. You just someone who is biologically sir. male is a male. But Mr. So. Shapiro, you know, you knew very well that he. But okay, can it's not a moral just, thing. If, if, if somebody wants to mutilate their body, that's their it's choice. It's not mutilation, but can we just talk about cutting off your testicles is mutilation? Can we talk? That's about not the actually fact? what they do, though, right? Okay, not hold that. They go in, in inside out. Okay. Well, but they don't even, most transgender don't have the genital reassignment. Most of them are not. Okay, right. Ben, let me, let me, can I finish me, real quick? Because this is important. Well, I, I, want, I want to let you piggyback on something. May I let you do that? Because yes, I, you may. Because I'm going to. But I, my blood is boiling. I know, and I'm going to give you a little more fuel. This is now because he Ben Ben is part of a a lot of people that have various kinds of feelings about this. This is what Zoe's talking about. Here's Peter Berg, best known for producing Friday Night Lights. He posted this picture on Instagram with the caption, quote, one man traded two legs for the freedom of the other to trade two balls for two boobs. Yeah. Guess which man made the cover of Vanity Fair, was praised for his courage by President Obama, and is to be honored with the Arthur Ashe Courage Award by ESPN. That's similar stuff okay, you're reacting Okay, so first to. of all, first of all, of course, a wounded soldier deserves all the accolade and respect in the world. They save lives. Well, guess what? There's many different ways to save lives. I believe that Caitlyn Jenner bringing this conversation to the forefront is saving lives. And at the end of the day, can you look at the fact that more than 50% of transgender youth attempt suicide because of discrimination, because of shame? Does that try to alter the way that you, you how, how, how you should project your, your thoughts? If what if they're watching right now? What if there's a teen out watching right now that is struggling with who they are living their truth? Let's talk about some of the biological facts for one second. No, I want well, you to answer I'm me. Happy. What would you say to a teen right now that, that, that really I'm believes 100? Allow me to answer your question. I'm, I, I, I'm full of emotion Wait. right now because people die. I've noticed. Clearly, clearly you're, it doesn't bother you because you're oh, sitting there stone-faced and cold-hearted. Of course it bothers me when people commit suicide, which is one of the reasons I don't believe that transgender surgery is the solution, considering that the suicide rate after transgender surgery is precisely the same yeah, because as the suicide then, rate before transgender surgery. Yeah, because then surgery. technically they're not passing and then they're open for more discrimination. Okay. The transgender suicide rate is approximately 0 0.8 in every 100. The only comparable suicide rate in human history of which I am aware is Jews living under Austrian and German rule during World War II. 
to liken the treatment of transgenders in the United States or the Western world to Jews you're living under Nazi. No, apples I'm actually comparing oranges. apples to apples but in I terms of the suicide rate. But I think if you can see what what discrimination does. Why don't we does, look at actual solutions? Well, why, well, we, why, why well, is well it then stop society's hating. Fault? Tolerate. Well, it's not, I, I'm happy to tolerate. Before Whatever we, people want to do is what they want to do. But the idea that the surgery itself is something to be glorified, to I be heard, rebels in the mental illness. I, but I, think if, you can, I think if you can bring up the difficulty that Jewish people have faced because of hatred, then why? Why can't you as a human, as Dr. Maya Angelou would say that I am human so therefore nothing human can be alien to me. Why can't you take that position and understand based upon your history? I don't hate that, anybody who has a mental illness and is trying to figure out how to fix that. What I well, do, there might have been I'm, people who said... I'm not going to liken the, the, the treatments of Jews under no, Nazis. No, the treatment of I, I, I think any time, any time a life is in but trouble, we're all in trouble. You brought we're that all in the trouble. The reason I brought that up is as a comparison of the treatments of the two and saying that the suicide rate is similar. So there Therefore, if the circumstances of the two are different, and this does actually take place, I want to thank the administration for ensuring that despite all the hardships, this could all happen. I especially want to thank the law enforcement officers for doing what they had to do to ensure that this event could take place in safety and security. Law enforcement is wildly underappreciated, and everything they do is done to make us safe. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Fred Allen for making this event possible. He sponsors events like these across college campuses, and Mr. Allen has proven himself to be a great advocate for free speech in America's founding principle. I do have a lot of warmth, I should say, for USC. I have a bunch of family members who are USC grads. My sister went here. Two of my sisters-in-law actually went to grad school here. I have a bunch of friends who went here. And while this is the inferior school in town, I will acknowledge that I may only be saying that because I went to the public school. <laughs> so while I do have a soft spot for USC, and my sister literally graduated about 200 feet from here from the opera program, I can see that a lot of Trojans don't necessarily have a soft spot for me. I was noticing some folks chanting outside. Apparently, I am a racist, a bigot, a homophobe, and all the rest of the litany. I'm also a neo-Nazi, which makes the yarmulke real weird. I'm apparently in favor of genocide, which was a new one. Uh, I am also in favor of violence. They were chanting outside that speech is violence, which is weird because they all seem to be standing just fine, even as I speak. <laughs> all of this is sure nonsense and garbage. I'm happy to respond to any such accusations. It's also worth noting that despite all of the hubbub over this particular speech, it's not like USC has no history of inviting controversial speakers, which is good. I mean, they should invite controversial speakers. But they've had radical feminist Gloria Steinem, had Senator Barbara Boxer, legitimately the stupidest woman in the history of the United States Senate. <laughs> Immigration radical Jose Antonio Vargas spoke here. And apparently, what's weird to me is that I'm apparently like a lot more controversial than Angela Davis, who is an actual Stalinist who once allegedly fun, funneled guns to criminals, and then the criminals actually used those guns to murder a judge. But the good news is that Angela Davis is welcome on this campus, but it takes a hell of a lot to get me here. I'm hearing that some of the protesters are accusing Yaf and me tonight of racism because apparently some folks were not allowed to come. I guess the claim went like this, that there were some people who tried to buy tickets and then they weren't allowed to come, or at least uh, they tried to claim tickets for free, and then weren't allowed to come. And this was based on race. This, of course, is total crap. Let me correct the record. The only people who were barred from coming were people who were openly stating on social media they planned to disrupt the event in advance. It is not the responsibility of YAF to sponsor people who want to come and disrupt an event that YAF is sponsoring. That's absurd. There were people who bought tickets under names like you're a Nazi and no hate speech. <laughs> Some students posted on social media were trying to reserve as many tickets as possible to shut it down. Note to protesters, if you can do this sort of Op, you might not want to broadcast it on social media, you dopes. <laughs> so these leftists are suggesting that such a ban on self-stated disruptors is racial profiling, which obviously it is not. Idiots come in all different colors. I mean, the, the people protesting outside who are expressing their First Amendment rights, and I'm glad that they are, I, cannot, I don't think it speaks well of their intelligence, but those people come in every race and size and creed and gender, all 93 of them. And 
And I do, for people who disagree, I have a standing policy. We do a long Q&A section here at my speeches. And people who disagree raise their hand. They immediately go to the front of the line. So I'm more than happy to have a conversation with anyone who wants to have a conversation with me. What I'm not happy about is anyone who tries to prevent others from hearing that conversation. I'm very happy that that is not taking place tonight again, thanks to security and USC for doing what they are supposed to do. So tonight, I want to talk a little bit about your freedoms and why they are under assault. They're under assault from a variety of groups, from motivated thinkers on a bunch of political sides. But most of all, they are under assault from advocates of identity politics. People who believe that their version of social justice should override individual rights. These are the folks who are really dangerous to your rights. Now, to understand the current assault on individual rights, we first have to understand there are two contrasting visions of rights in the United States and in the West generally. So one vision of rights is the negative rights vision. The negative rights vision basically says that rights come from God. They are inalienable. They come from God or nature, as expressed in the Declaration of Independence. They are self-evident. And these are the rights that you would have in a state of nature meaning you and your family live somewhere without a government. What are the rights that you have as a human being in the absence of a government? So, for example, you have a right to self-defense. You have a right to free speech. Nobody is allowed to actually infringe on those freedoms because in a state of nature, if somebody tried to do that, you would defend yourself from that sort of imposition. Those are negative rights. Then there's another vision of rights. These are positive rights. So positive rights are rights that come...